Our universe began with a bang, a big bang. I see a swirling, seething plasma of unimaginably hot particles and fierce radiation. Everything everywhere, all apparently, all the same. I fast forward almost 14 billion years and gasp. Now I see galaxies and stars and planets. And on at least one planet, which its inhabitants call Earth, oceans and mountains, plants and animals, brains and minds. What began fundamentally simple has become astonishingly complex. How did such structure come about? How does complexity come from simplicity? I'm Robert Lawrence Kuhn, and Closer to Truth is my journey to find out. A teeming world of complexities surround me, and it looks all so ordinary, until I jolt myself into visualizing how utterly simple it all once was. How could such an extraordinary transformation have come about? I ache to understand existence. So to begin, I probe the essence of complexity, what is complexity? I go to Boston to meet a physicist whose deep insights into complexity have spawned new ideas, Stephen Wolfram. When we look at reality, the first thing we notice is that there is great diversity, great complexity. How could such complexity come about? Well, I think it's, it's in a sense kind of humiliating for us as humans that if we're presented, let's say, with two objects, and we're told one of them is from nature, mm -hmm. one of them is something that we as humans have created, that it's a pretty good guess that the one that looked simpler <laughs> will be the one that we as humans have created. <laughs> and yet, somehow, we haven't managed to capture the secret that nature seems to have that lets it, apparently, quite effortlessly, create all the kind of complexity that we see. So I thought 25 years ago when I started really thinking seriously about this kind of thing that with all of the fancy physics and mathematics and so on that I knew that this kind of basic mystery of science would be easy mm. to crack. Mm. What I realized was, was this, that if we are to have any theory of this kind of thing, it has to be the case that nature follows some kind of definite rules. But the issue is, have the rules that we have learnt from sort of the development of mathematics and so on, are those the rules that nature is really using, or is nature using some other kind of rule? We have to sort of start thinking about what are all the possible rules that nature might, might conceivably use to do what it does. They might not happen to be the rules that we, as humans, have set up in our mathematics and in the development of our science. In modern times, we have kind of a good foundation to think about all possible rules. We have computers and computer programs, mm -hmm. and we can kind of imagine looking at sort of all the possible programs, each one corresponding to a different rule for how things get made. Mm -hmm. And we can ask the question, in the space of all possible computer programs, what's out there and how does it compare with what we see in nature? My first assumption was that when the programs I was looking at were simple, then their behavior would somehow be correspondingly simple. If one wanted to make something complicated, that it would necessarily be the case that one had to sort of put something complicated in, that one couldn't get complexity out with nothing put in. So I was fairly amazed when, when I actually did the experiment and found that some of the programs that I looked at were very simple, but you suddenly see a situation where you can start off from a very simple rule that you can specify in just a few bits of information, and suddenly you see that out of this very simple rule, very simple starting condition, you get this pattern of great complexity. It's the single most remarkable thing that I've ever seen. The thing that I found most remarkable is that from you know, just sort of sampling out in the computational universe, one sees this great diversity of behavior, some simple, some very complex. And what, uh, what I've found remarkable is that this seems to mirror very well what we see in nature. When we, as humans, do kind of engineering, we tend to operate under the constraint that we have to readily foresee what the consequences of what we build will be. Very good point. Um, 
but uh, nature operates under no such constraints. So it gets to kind of sample uh, much more arbitrarily the possible rules. It actually isn't as difficult as we might imagine for nature to make all this complexity. It's actually the most, quote, natural thing to have happen because in the universe of all possible rules that nature might be using to make things, a, a large number of them will sort of immediately produce complexity. The only reason that this seems peculiar to us is that we as humans in the activities that we've typically been engaged in have sort of restricted ourselves to dealing only with those kinds of rules where we can immediately foresee the consequences of the rules and where almost by definition the rules have to be simple. The rules have to produce things that are sort of simple enough for us to be able to, to understand what they do. So in a sense, the, the answer to the question of where does the complexity of nature come from is nature is sampling the possible rules in the computational universe and a fair fraction have this feature that they produce complexity even from very simple underlying rules. And there's a fundamental question Stephen offers a new kind of science, one based on simple computational rules, which when nature blindly samples and uses them in building our universe, results in great complexity. But why should nature work this way? Why should random rules be the hidden key? What is it about the deep essence of reality such that simple rules produce complex things? Some scientists now say that there is a reason, and the reason is fundamental. The universe at its core is information, pure information. I head across town to MIT to meet a leader in quantum computing, Seth Lloyd. Seth sees the foundations of reality as information. He takes this seriously, but happily not himself. Seth, you've talked about that a computational universe necessarily engenders complexity. Necessarily? Sure. It's a mathematical theorem. Necessarily does. So, and, but of course, it is mysterious, right? It's very mysterious why the universe could start out to be so simple. Simple laws, simple initial conditions, Things evolved for a few billion years, and pooey, you know, <laughs> what the heck happened, right? That's amazing. So I claim that that um, you can actually understand this pretty straightforward fashion. And the the secret to why complexity rises comes from the fact that at bottom the universe is computing. You are really saying that life itself it, it was actually necessary. That 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 was a. Uh, uh, it was built into the laws that created complexity? Your DNA and my DNA couldn't have been built into that initial moment, Robert, because there wasn't enough information around. What's built into the universe is, if you like, the capacity to produce complex things somewhere down the road. Why is it that we get things like life from a very simple computation that's taking place at the level of elementary particles? Well. There's a simple reason for that too, which is that computations necessarily give rise to more complex computations. If I take something like, you know, just a bunch of elementary particles banging off of each other, as long as they're capable of what's called universal computation, which just means performing very simple logical operations, bit flips. Now program them at random. Just give them a random program. Random. Random. This is the key to this. We've got to have an account for where this information comes from. The answer is it comes from little quantum fluctuations, from quantum randomness. Why is our galaxy here rather than 100 million right. light years off in that direction? Right. Well, it's here because way back at the beginning of the universe, there was a little tiny, tiny, tiny quantum fluctuation that said the energy was just a little, little, little bit <laughs> bitter, bigger here than it was over there. Right. Well, and because gravity has this funny feature that, that if there's a little tiny bit extra energy, so it'll start to clump around. Give it enough time. Right, so it started to clump, then the energy density got bigger, got even clumpier, clumpier, the process accelerates, pretty soon you have a galaxy, the galaxy formed here and not there because of this little quantum bit that got right, injected. Right, right. So we're injecting randomness into the universe at all points. That's where all information comes from. Its origin is in these little quantum fluctuations. So why does that 
necessarily produce complex behavior? Well, there's a, an old and wrong explanation of complexity that says it's just randomness. So I did a little, a little calculation imagining, suppose every elementary particle in the whole universe is a monkey. It's been <laughs> typing as fast as the laws of physics allow <laughs> since the beginning of time, yeah, 13.7 right, billion right, years right. ago, right? How much of Hamlet's soliloquy could be written up there in the cosmic black body radiation? And the answer is? To be or not to be, that is the, that's about. That's it. Yeah they'd only get about 50 letters in. So that's not the right explanation. It can't just be that randomness is just being injected and we just arrive at random. We would only get gobbledygook. But now suppose that these monkeys, instead of typing into a typewriter, are typing into a computer. And that the computer is taking this gobbledygook, the monkeys type these random bits of information and it interprets that. It interprets these bits as instructions. You know, do this, do that, do something else. Well, at first that might seem you know, garbage in, garbage out, right? The same situation. But in fact, it's not so. There is a beautiful and elegant branch of mathematics called algorithmic information theory, which is essentially the theory of what happens when monkeys type into computers, right? What do you expect to get out? And the answer, perhaps surprisingly, is you expect to get out all sorts of interesting and complex things. Now, why is that? It's because there are very simple, short, random looking computer programs. There's a short program that will cause a computer, say, to print out all the digits of pi. Or a program that will tell the computer, create chemistry and see what happens when you combine different molecules together. And then there's another program that says, explore all possible computable mathematical structures in the world. Those programs are short. And if you take a computer and you program it at random, you expect it to hit upon one of those programs here and there. So our universe is being programmed by these little quantum fluctuations. Bits are being injected. Different bits are being injected in different place, in places. And somewhere, someplace, sometime, you expect interesting stuff to start to happen. Little combinations of chemicals will start reproducing themselves. Put themselves inside a vesicle and become a simple cell. Cells will band together to form things like animals. Right? Animals will start to have sex right, and reproduce like mad and eventually you have bunny rabbits and human beings and then human beings will create computers and societies. Those kinds of things necessarily happen because the universe is computing. Seth envisions the entire universe as a gigantic computer with quantum fluctuations which occur randomly injected as random computer programs. And whichever random computer programs generated greater complexity had greater influence on what formed or happened next. To make it work, the cauldron of complexity had to be the very early universe because that's where quantum fluctuations had major impact. And that's why I speak with physicist Lee Smolin, who specializes in quantum gravity, the key to the very early universe. Lee, we know that the early universe was incredibly homogeneous. Today we see enormous complexity. How can the laws of physics take us from such homogeneous hot gas to today where there's such variety? Part of the answer is gravity. That gravity, by being only attractive, leads to the formation of structure, leads to inhomogeneities. One of the basic questions in cosmology and physics is why does the world allow complexity? Even with the action of gravity, if the initial conditions were somewhat different, if the expansion was much faster, if the cosmological constant was much larger, then there would never be time for this clumping to occur. There would never be any complex systems. And I don't mean this in any mystical way or magical way. I think there's something anomalous about the viewpoint of physics always looking for the simpler and simpler and simpler. And meanwhile, the rest of science <laughs> is discovering wisdom and patterns in the complex. And my suspicion comes in when you start to ask, why these laws? So what you're saying then is that maybe we need the complexity at the most fundamental level in order to generate the complexities that we see in the modern world? Yes. And how could that happen? 
Well, how does it happen in biology? Well, it happens in biology because there's a bottleneck. All the information in the complexity of biological systems goes through single cells in the process of sexual reproduction. So there's a bottleneck from the very large into the DNA into the, the very small. The general concept, though, at each level, there's some kind of emergent properties. And those would be, in principle, not discernible from fundamentals. But the, at least the prevailing wisdom is that at the simplest level in physics, you need to be more and more simple. Yeah, so so my complex. sense is that the, res the, the mistake is why there's a mystery is there's no coupling between the very fundamental, which we think of as the very tiny, yes. and the macroscopic. Now in biology... And how do you get that? I think you get it from introducing something like biology into the history of cosmology. Which sounds backward in, in time because biology didn't come until billions of years yes. after the cosmology. I don't mean, I don't, I don't mean something mystical. You mean the principles of biology? Yes, sure. I don't mean something mystical about the universe is alive and let's all dance. I mean, <laughs> um, I mean the way in which biology works is you get a causal coupling between the properties of the very small, that is the complexity of particular molecules, DNA molecules, yeah, okay. Okay, and its consequences for phylogeny for the macroscopic. And I believe that in the history of the universe, there must be events which couple the large-scale consequences of the fundamental laws to somehow the selection of the fundamental I think that's laws. fascinating. And what would that tell you that the basic principles of biology are similar to the basic principles that physics has used in cosmology? That doesn't sound like a coincidence. I don't think that's a coincidence. And I think we're in the midst of two simultaneous scientific revolutions, the one that came from Einstein and the one that came from Darwin. And I think that there is a relationship between the Einsteinian revolution and the Darwinian revolution, which is yet to be realized. But it's the only way I can see to answer the conundrums of why these laws and not other laws, the fine tuning problems, and so on. That's really radically some deep structural principle in the cosmos that impels both astronomy and biology. Lee offers that selection principles working in physics favors certain fundamental laws, just like Darwinian selection working in evolution favors certain kinds of species. But biology itself is a puzzle. In our world, things become more random. Gases intermix. Scrambled eggs do not reassemble themselves into whole eggs. How then do organisms become more complex? I go to the National Institutes of Health to meet its director, biologist Francis Collins. Francis, it seems baffling to start with this homogenous, murky soup of the early universe after the Big Bang. And fast forward, 13.7 billion years to today. Where does complexity come from, from such simplicity? Energy seems to me is the answer. If you want to take something that is not complex and turn it into something complex, well, what does that usually require? Energy of some sort. Uh, my field of biology uh, certainly is a good example of going from what we assume was very limited complexity uh, 3.85 billion years ago, uh, which is when the first life forms apparently appeared over the course uh, of that uh, long period of time. Enormous diversity and complexity coming into being in terms of life forms that we see around us today. You throw into this uh, the energy of the sun, and you throw into this uh, long periods of time for random changes to be selected for if they actually provided benefit to that particular organism, then you can get all the way to us, at least in mechanical terms, although I'll argue that there's something missing if that's all that you limit yourself to. So I don't actually see from a biologist's perspective that the complexity problem is that big a problem. Once you realize a Darwin's amazing flash of genius, then complexity was almost guaranteed because complex organisms are likely to have a greater ability to control their environment and therefore to reproduce and survive and distribute themselves. Do you see this in any way as indicating some uh, prearranged purpose? For me as a believer, 
This is all very consistent with a prearranged purpose that God used this mechanism to ultimately bring into being complex creatures that would have intelligence and a mind and free will and the ability to understand right and wrong and to seek after fellowship with him. It would be pretty hard to imagine that happening with a, a murky soup of particles, but it certainly could happen with creatures like ourselves. So yes, for me, I definitely see a purpose, but I don't see that the laws of physics had to be violated violated in order for that purpose to be achieved once the universe got going. To Francis, biological evolution, leveraging random mutations and empowered by energy from the sun, engenders biological complexity. But neither can explain the complexity of the cosmos emerging from the early universe. I am all for deep structural principles tying the threads of the world into fine cosmic fabric, but not if they're artificially woven together. The question of complexity from simplicity must be understood on its own terms. So I go back to Boston and ask Nobel laureate Frank Wilczek to take a fresh look at the fundamental causes of complexity. I think there are three fundamental causes of all the complexity we observe in the universe. One is that even simple equations, and specifically the equations that we believe govern fundamental physics and cosmology, can have very complex solutions. And the solutions can be very sensitively dependent on the precise initial conditions. Secondly is the fact that the world is governed by quantum mechanics, and that gives uncertainty that the sensitivity to initial conditions can work on. And it also makes the world enormously large based on wave functions rather than uh, particular objects in space, uh, which means that even if the f equations of the whole are simple for the whole wave function, you only get to see part of it and that can lead to apparent complexity. And then finally, a generalization of that observation is that many of the predictions that you can easily make from the fundamental equations regard average properties or statistical properties of everything, you know, large, large regions of the universe or many, many solar systems, many, many galaxies. So, but if you're looking at only one particular solar system, it has its own quirks. All these things work together. So for instance, quantum mechanics gives you fluctuations, a level of uncertainty. And so if your equations are very sensitive to fluctuations, uh, they will amplify the little quantum mechanical fluctuations into macroscopic consequences. As far as I can tell, all the complexity in the world can be traced to these three causes. Quantum mechanics, sensitivity to initial conditions, and partial view. So in, in generating something like this Earth, how would you use all three of these to linearly go from something simple to something complex? Okay, so we start with the early universe, which uh, is quantum mechanical, so it has little fluctuations right. to begin with. Those get spread out, perhaps, by inflation to vast scales. Then they get amplified by gravity, by gravity and, and form instabilities, so things fragment into little pieces. Uh, the pieces have simple statistical properties. So the ensemble sort of is something we can predict its average properties, but each particular realization can be very complicated. Mm. So that's how the three work together. Take two snapshots of reality, photo one the simple hot soup of the Big Bang. Photo two, the vast diversity of our Earth today. How radically, astonishingly different. How from such simplicity could such complexity have come about? Two kinds of mechanisms. In the first, in the very early universe, when the entire cosmos was far smaller than one proton, quantum mechanics generated random fluctuations. 
And those random fluctuations, although vanishingly small, became the seeds of diversity as gravity worked its methodical magic over billions of years. In the second, reality is information and the universe is a computer, such that quantum mechanics generates random rules, some of which, surprisingly, build up astounding complexities. Gravity and quantum mechanics are surely involved, but whether reality is information and rules predominate is more speculative. This is no internet game, I remind myself. This is reality. I sit by myself and I chill with awe as I wonder, what is closer to truth? For complete interviews and for further information, please visit closertotruth.com.